Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So welcome to a Saturday morning. I kind of wanted to get a, a nice little shot of the farm. There's a farm near our house and so I usually do it in the back, but you, unfortunately I've got it parked just the way you can't see it. So anyway, hopefully it's a nice background. Um, today I wanted to talk about a couple things about learning. So uh, I've posted some, I guess people think I'm being very critical of Tesla, but I'm really not. I unfortunately, I guess, have a beta tester sort of attitude about things, which is that if it works fine, I don't really talk about it. If it's got a problem, then I talk about it. Because as a beta tester, one of the things you're supposed to do is you're supposed to call out all the stuff that doesn't work. So if, you know, if you're a beta tester and 90% of the software is working just fine, like imagine like a game, right? So you're beta testing a game and 90% of the game plays properly and the characters work right and they run correctly and stuff. But then there's like 10% where the character runs through a wall or, you know, <laughs> you shoot somebody in the head, right? It's a shoot em up game, whatever. And they don't die or, you know, people shoot you and you're just magically still alive, right? So those are the things you call out to the company that you're working with to try to tell them that, hey, you know, these are the areas you need to improve. So that's the kind of mindset I have. I'm like, this thing drives 90% of the time, 95% of the time on city streets, perfectly fine. And it's amazing. So I just want to be really clear about that. I am totally blown away and impressed by what Andre Karpathy and team at Tesla have done. This thing works fantastically. So when you hear me calling out the problems, I'm calling out the say five to 10% of the time that things don't work quite right yet. And it's beta software. So it's intended to be put out there for the public to test or you know a group of the public to test in order to get a more diverse and a larger reaction than just their engineers can do. That's one of the problems, of course, with something like uh, the Super Cruise and especially Waymo, where they only have their engineers driving the cars, is that they can only collect so many miles of data with their engineers driving it. If you have this giant fleet of you know tens to hundreds of thousands of people driving all the time, you're gonna get a lot more data. And I've done so many videos, <laughs> you can check some out up here. But I've done so many videos on how data is super, super important to machine learning. And it's the most important thing I guess, tied with the architecture that you use. But if you don't have good data, it doesn't matter if you have the most genius architecture in the world, it's not going to work. That's how machine learning works these days, is it's completely based around data. So anyway, I you know I just wanna say very publicly, kudos to Tesla, kudos to Andre Karpathy and his team. You, um, you guys are doing an amazing job. The, the software is incredible. We, my wife and I have talked about it and I did a video on this recently, speaking of which was supposed to be kind of humorous and some people don't really have a sense of humor. Elon Musk just did that whole thing about the Texas Institute of Technology and Science. He did a whole tweet thread about that yesterday and there were some people who are just totally didn't get it. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. If you don't have a sense of humor, that's just silly these days. You gotta have a sense of humor to get through life. So grow a sense of humor, man. <laughs> but anyway, the video from, from yesterday was supposed to be humorous. It was supposed to be funny. And I think some people really took it seriously. So my wife and I, Miss Information and I, are going to do a video that we'll probably release on Monday that's going to talk about some of those questions and some of those misconceptions and also just some general questions. So definitely stay tuned for that one because I think that'll help for people who are not driving the full self-driving beta. It actually may be a very helpful episode for you. But anyway, Miss Information and I have come to the conclusion that the car is driving at kind of a, let's say like, at least in the state of Georgia, you can get, at 15 years old, you can get a learner's permit, which means you have to have like your parent or somebody in the seat next to you, but you're allowed to drive the car. So at that point, like just imagine someone who's had their learner's permit for four or five days, right? That's how they're driving. So most of the time, the, you know, you're 15, I've, I've, had, I've trained three boys to drive from scratch and we've got a fourth coming up in just half a year, yikes. So anyway, I know I have experience with children learning how to drive and it feels an awful lot that way. It's like, it, it, it drives really well as long as circumstances are good, but when it hits something it doesn't understand, it kind of freaks out, I guess. You know, <laughs> that's not really what a neural net's doing, it's not having an emotional reaction, but it feels that way as a human being. It's like, whoops, the thing's just like, it just goes off the rails a little bit. It. So that's exactly how it's driving. So given the fact that it's sort of a 15 year old student driver, you know, with having their learner's permit for a week, 
The big question is not where it is right now, but how fast can it improve? And the question of learning is really interesting. So I've just come in at 10.3 beta. I've watched a lot of other videos of other you know, drivers, beta drivers, who've been driving this since 8.3, and I've been seeing the improvement there, but of course there's nothing like driving it yourself because you really get to experience in that case, and you're like, whoa, you know, this is, when it does something freaky, you're like, holy crap, you know, it just did that freaky thing. So the big question is, it would take, uh, let's say you had a, a person with a learner's permit, and I, nobody would ever do this, but let's say that person drove 10,000 miles in their first year of driving before they even got their official license. That would be an amazing amount of driving for a student driver to do. But if they did that, in a year, they could collect 10,000 miles worth of you know mental driving experience, at which point you're supposed to be able to become kind of an expert at something, right? That's the kind of quasi, if you do something for 10,000 hours, you become a master of it. But now let's think about Tesla's full self-driving. If we just take the beta and we don't even deal with the wider group of people that are driving the regular software and collecting data, within that group, if you say have, you know, just throw out some round numbers and stuff, if you have 10,000 people driving 10,000 miles, then you've got 10 to the eighth, which would be what, 100 million miles, something like that, right? So you've got 100 million miles worth of data. So as opposed to one human being having 10,000 miles worth of driving data in, in their one year experience, you've got 100 million miles worth of driving data. Now for Tesla, it's actually much, much higher than that, but I'm just throwing these numbers out just to show how having a fleet can make a really big difference. So the advantage of human beings is that we're really, really good at learning things, much, much better than a computer is. But the disadvantage is that every single one of us has to learn all of this stuff ourselves. We don't get to go, you know, I just watched The Matrix again last night, you know, plugging in and learning jujitsu or learning Kung Fu or something like that. You get the instant, like as soon as one thing has learned it, everything learns it. That's the advantage that computers have. So the computer in this car has the advantage of having hundreds of millions to billions of miles of data that I, as a person, do not have. So disadvantages, it doesn't learn nearly as quickly or as well. Advantages, it has many, many more miles. So the interesting question is, where does the one outweigh the other? Right now, my experience as a human being having driven I don't know, 250,000 miles in my life, something like that. I don't know. That's really scary to think about that, but that's probably pretty reasonable. Um, I have, I way outweigh the car. Like I, I'm significantly better than the car driving full self-driving beta right now, but that should change pretty rapidly, especially with more and more people driving the full self-driving beta and the architecture getting better and the training getting better. And again, I've done a whole series on AI day, and that's probably the series that I would recommend if you really want to get into the nitty gritty about how Tesla is training all of their software and learning to do a better and better job at this. So of course, I don't have any information about what Tesla is doing internally or anything, but at a kind of a guess, a rough sort of estimation at this point. And I think I'll be able to refine this over time. Every major point release that comes out, I think 10.4 might be coming out this evening. So, you know, I might see it in the next day or two. So that will be pretty cool to be able to check out how the, the, the new beta 10.4 works. Uh, and that'll give you, you know, the, the more data points I get, the more I'll be able to specify this time. But at this point, I feel like the crossover point given where it was a year ago or approximately a year ago with 8.2, 8.3 beta to where it is now, I would say somewhere between one year and 18 months, it's going to be a better driver than me or at least equivalent to me. That would be my rough guess. And the amazing part about that is remember, that's not just my car, that's every single car in the fleet because all the cars that have the hardware and the software are going to be able to drive just the same. And that's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say it's gonna be driving at approximately my driving level in 12 to 18 months. So what is that? That's late 2022 to early to mid, so like March, 2023. So there you go. You can check back in March, 2023 and you can see how I feel about all of that. Of course, I do reserve the right to, as more point releases come out, start to like refine that prediction and hopefully get it you know, even closer, like down to like maybe within months or something of when I think that'll happen. Now, am I saying this will be true level four autonomy where we won't have to have any interaction with the car? No, I don't think that'll happen yet to a large extent because of regulatory issues, not even because of the driving issues, because of the, you know, the, the regulatory bodies, especially right now, goodness gracious, with NHTSA, who knows what's going to happen with the regulations. I hope I get to keep driving my full self-driving beta. That would really suck if they took it away for completely 
bogus reasons. But anyway, so the, the regulatory issues aside, what I'm predicting is that the car will be able to drive as well as me in 12 to 18 months. Not that you will be able to like, you know, and go to sleep in the car. You know, that won't happen for a while because it's going to take time and data to show that the car is safer than a human driver. So anyway, that's my prediction. I want to talk about one other thing that I find super, super cool. And I think people may have misinterpreted my tweet last night. And that is that there's two specific spots in the right. One of them is the exit to my neighborhood. And I drive it every single day because there's one only one exit from my neighborhood. And it has a stop sign and then a big gap and then the white line that you have to drive up to in order to actually stop and the car was always stopping at the stop sign and then creeping forward to the, the actual line that specified where you were supposed to stop admittedly a very confusing circumstance but it would do that it would creep up really slowly and annoy the heck out of anybody behind you and then it would pull out and make an unprotected left and I'll put I'll insert a couple of clips right here so watch this this is fun because it actually stops at the stop sign which is kind of silly. what is it going that far over for that was wrong <laughs> So watch, see, it actually stops at the stop sign and then it goes creeping forward. So it like creeps. Fortunately, there's nobody behind us. So it's just going to do its thing. What, what happens? Oh my goodness. So if you hit the <laughs> I don't know what it's doing right now. It's it's taking its time. So Usually you, it's a little more aggressive. If you hit the gas. <laughs> if you hit the gas for it to go quite what on, it's doing you're going to confuse the hell out of this I know, this, this woman. poor woman is going to get And then it just <gasps> goes. I know, what? it's crazy. It didn't even... <laughs> But what you can see in this last clip is that it actually seems to have learned to go all the way up to the actual line before it actually makes the turn. And that's a major improvement. And I've tested it a couple of times and it seems to be working that way. The other circumstance was a, just a mistake. There's a three lane road that's going down a major road in like near my house. And it wanted to go straight, but it was trying to get into the right lane. The right lane happens to be a turn only lane, but it's too soon and there's a giant concrete barrier at the end of this thing so if you don't turn you're going to crash into it and it was going into the right lane and trying to crash right into that median but what i've noticed is in the last couple of drives it actually a couple times has flicked on the right turn thing but then it's i think it's realizing that that's a right turn lane now and it's it's staying in the lane it needs to be in and moving up to where the actual turn is because it's like there's this right turn only and then I don't know, maybe a quarter mile later, there's the actual right turn that it needs to take. So it's staying in the proper lane now. So that for sure indicates that it's learning. And I think when I tweeted this, I said, wow, this is really cool that it's learning. And I wasn't very clear about that. You've only got, you know, 240 characters or whatever to write this out loud in. But I wanted to specify this. I'm not saying that the car is training neural networks. I'm absolutely not saying that because I completely disagree with that. And there's been several people calling me out. If you've watched any of my videos on AI Day, and I'll put a card up here again, you'll know that I have talked about this very specifically. The cars cannot do the regression. They can't do the training themselves. But what they do is they're collecting map data. And Andre Carpathy talked about this. The fleet is collecting map data. It's collecting information about where people are driving. And again, I don't believe that anybody has had full self-driving beta until me in the area in which I live. So I think I'm the first person with it. And therefore, it had no experience in terms of full self-driving beta. It had, had not driven this area before. And so what I think it's doing is it's uploading information to the cloud, right? That information is being put into maps data and that that is being worked on and then being sent back to here to my individual car as I'm driving and so especially because I'm flagging some of these things too you know I'm like wait it shouldn't stop and then creep forward it should actually stop at the white line so I'm hitting the little feedback button so you know that may be prioritized and they may be looking at that sooner but I think that's more for training I think the part that really matters here is that what it's doing is it's uploading map data and it's creating a fleet-wide map information about the, the the area that I'm in and so it's learning some of these you know little niggling details but things that could cause problems because you don't want to be especially in the wrong lane when there's a concrete median strip in the way. You don't want to do that. You want to be in the correct lane. So, but it is, it's learning this, but it's not learning it as much internal to the car as I think it's improving the maps data. And the maps data that Tesla has that it can then send back to the fleet, and including my car, is helping my 
car to drive better under these circumstances. So anyway, I think that's really, really cool. I obviously don't have any evidence that that particular thing is happening here. It's just anecdotal, right? I have an experience of a few times that it's doing it. So obviously I can't say like, oh yeah, obviously that's what's going on because I don't have the internal knowledge of that. But that's the evidence that I've seen from my drives. So it's the best evidence I can go on. But again, it's only anecdotal because it's just a few times that I've done this. But it's things where it was making that mistake consistently at the beginning, a week ago, and it's now gotten to a point where it's not making that mistake, or at least it's only doing it once in a while now. So that shows a market improvement. I don't believe that my software has has changed at all since last week. So if that's the case, then it's almost surely map data. It's data from the cloud that Tesla is shipping back to the car, which is improving the way that the car is driving. And I think that's super, super cool. And that's a way that improvements can happen continuously rather than waiting for every software update that happens. Now, one thing that I will be really interested in is that if they've used my data, right, for the 10.4 release, which again, should be coming up relatively soon, I'm not exactly sure, it's Saturday, October 30th, so I don't know when it's gonna come out. But when it does come out, if I see a significant improvement improvement in my area of driving because they trained on some of the data that I gave them, that will be really interesting because in that case, you'll see, I'll be like, oh, okay, the, the network has actually trained on this data and now suddenly it's made a significant improvement. What I've seen so far is like, you know, fine detail improvement, but if it's actually trained on the data and it's improved some of the problem areas that I've had and there's plenty of problem areas still. That will be really fascinating to see. So I, of course, will do an update on that after we get the point release. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk about what I'm seeing, at least, as little improvements that are happening that I think are related to better data being fed to the car. So that's really, really cool in its own right. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Tesla is doing an amazing job. 90 to 95% of the time, it's driving fantastically. Just an incredible job, Tesla, the AI team at Tesla. It's amazing. But, you know, there are details that aren't working as well and there are problems and they're consistent problems. It makes the mistakes a lot in the same areas. But again, I'm seeing improvement in some of that stuff that I think is related to better maps data or better data about the area. And I'll be really curious to see what happens with the point releases. And again, my prediction is it's going to drive at approximately my level of driving, which is reasonably expert human driving, right? Quarter million miles is a lot of miles to have driven in your life. But I think it's going to achieve that in somewhere between 12 and 18 months. So stay tuned. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it and also can consider subscribing for more of this content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your help. It's been fun talking on Discord. Oh, and I also wanted to plug a new piece of merch. People have been really interested in this. I posted something about an, a student driver thing on the back of my car, and the people on Discord said, make an AI student driver. So one of my Discord patrons actually made up a quick bumper sticker, and Dan has put it on the merch store. So check out the merch store. I'll put a little picture of it up here as well. But if you want to join the fun and be an AI student driver, whether or not your car is driving full self-driving beta, it can be kind of fun to just put that on the back of your car. Anyway, I've got magnetic stickers and also non-stick regular bumper stickers. So you can choose which one you want and order it from the merch store if you're interested. So definitely check that out. And in the meantime, please feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time. Bye-bye.